What does it mean to be human? What it means to be human, it has to have something to do with the microbiome. There must be something deeper than just cancer because we have many more epidemics than just cancer right now. We need to tie all of this back to chronic inflammation, which we know is the root of all disease. Inflammation has to come from the immune system. The immune system lies mostly in your gut lining. We call it the GALT, the gastrointestinal associated lymphoid tissue. 60 to 70 percent of the volume of your immune system there, but over 80 percent of the antibodies that are made in your total body lie there in the gut lining. These finger-like projections are called villi throughout your intestinal environment, and you see them, they are kind of coral reef-looking structures. They seem poorly engineered in that the lining, the epithelial lining or protective membrane that separates you from the outside world is only one cell layer thick. That's 50 microns. That's half the width of one of your hairs. So plucky human hair, cut that in half longitudinally, and now that's the width of the cellophane-like layer that separates your immune system from the outside world. That's bizarre engineering. That cellophane will cover two tennis courts in surface area. Your skin only is a meter and a half in surface area. Two tennis courts of surface area is your gut lining, and it's only half the width of a human hair, one cell layer thick, and it's fully dependent not just on those cells, but it's actually reliant on the tight junctions or the Velcro that will tie those microscopic billions of cells into a carpet that would cover two tennis courts. And so all these tiny microscopic cells, trillions of them have to line up to make this coherent, intelligent barrier system to keep the outside world out, absorb nutrients in an intelligent fashion, and keep the toxins and chemicals out of your body. That's the process of being human. It turns out that at the molecular level, to be human is to have an intact barrier so that you can say, here is me inside, everything outside of that is potential foreign invader and I need to attack it. So your immune system is programmed to recognize self and to respond to non-self. The issue that we have at hand is that it's the same Velcro that ties the bloodstream together. So all of your blood vessels are tied together by the same Velcro proteins that hold your gut lining together. It turns out it's the same Velcro proteins that tie your entire blood-brain barrier together to protect your brain and peripheral nerves from whatever's in your bloodstream. It turns out that the same tight junction proteins, the Velcro, is holding together the tubules, the proximal renal tubules and beyond, that detox your body. And it turns out that glyphosate, after killing the microbiome in your gut and the soil, after blocking the ability of your microbiome and plants to make the building blocks for human health or a human body, it also goes on to destroy the Velcro. This is the small intestine growing under our microscopes at, a clinic, or at our labs. And so we have highlighted ZO1, which is an element of the tight junction Velcro. And what you see zippered together is, is millions of these small intestine cells that are making an intelligent, coherent barrier system in a petri dish now. If we add glyphosate at 20 parts per million, which is about the concentration you would see in conventionally grown beets and sweet potato and some of my favorite foods on earth will have about that concentration of glyphosate, within 16 minutes you've blown apart the membrane. Destroyed the Velcro just in minutes. It's blowing apart our self-identity at the cell level because right behind that membrane that just blew apart is your immune system. Every drink of water and every breath you take and every piece of food you're about to put in your mouth is about to hit your immune system. If you chronically do that, if you chronically overwhelm this gulf, this immune system, with everything that you take in because you're now a leaky sieve, this is an inevitable graph. What we're looking at is the number of acres of wheat sprayed in black line here, the number of acres of wheat sprayed in the United States since 1990. It's been going up steeply in the last two decades. In yellow, you see the prevalence of the autoimmune disease celiac. We have lost the ability to recognize self when we start to build autoantibodies to ourself and to the gluten that causes a rheumatoid arthritis-like picture. And so we're getting huge immune dysfunction. And of course, it's here in the late 1990s where we start to see a huge prevalence of celiac and Crohn's disease. It's in the late 1990s and early 2000s that we start to see an amazing explosion of thyroid antibody disease in our young girls. 
By 2003, we did a study at the University of Virginia that for the first time went into elementary school just to, to universally screen girls to find out if, if they were making antibodies to their thyroid gland yet. And astoundingly, by age 12, 25% of these girls were already making antibodies to their own thyroid gland. One in four girls destroying her, her thyroid gland by age 12. Her immune system is so confused about what's outside and what's inside, she's literally lost her self-identity at the molecular level, and her immune system is confused and attacking self. Extraordinary journey away from he being human through killing our microbiome. This is what gluten sensitivity looks like under a microscope. But again, we've got ZO1, it's lighting up the zipper between the cells, and then we've got the blue nuclei within the cells kind of showing you where the cells are. So here's zippered together cells. We add gliadin, which is the breakdown product of gluten, from the amount that you would see in about one slice of pizza, and it blows the membrane apart. So this is gluten sensitivity or leaky gut under the microscope. And it turns out that this is very, very similar to the glyphosate process. And so we have control membrane. You add a little bit of gluten, and you get this drop in the protective membrane. You add a little bit of glyphosate, you get a drop in that protective membrane. But if you put those two chemicals in the same bite of food, a little bit of glyphosate and a little bit of gluten, you lose 80% of your barrier system. We started doing that in 1992. And so we started in 1992, and now most of the wheat in the United States is contaminated either directly or indirectly with glyphosate in the water system. 75% of the rainfall has glyphosate in it in the United States agricultural environment. 75% of the rain. 75% of the air is contaminated with glyphosate now. We are steeped in this stuff and is interacting with, with proteins like the gluten protein that's been around since the beginning of time, never really causing us any harm until now. And so our, our group is about to publish this data showing that glyphosate is what accelerates the injury to gluten, and we just figured out how. So this is, again, John Gilday's genius here. But he figured out that glyphosate, when it touches the small intestine, upregulates CXCR3, which is a receptor for gliadin. The small intestine doesn't even really express a receptor for this compound until it sees glyphosate. And suddenly, you've got a membrane that's going to bind gl gliadin and create a, a leaky gut from gluten because of the predisposition or the injury that started with that glyphosate. As CXCR3 binds gliadin, it then triggers zonulin production. Zonulin now goes system-wide to destroy the Velcro everywhere not just in your gut lining create leaky gut, but leaky brain is instantly on the back end of this. I'll show you some of our data on that in a few minutes. So zonulin goes to create that leaky vascular, blood-brain barrier, leaky gut everywhere. What we're showing is the terahydrite, and I'll show you more on this in a few minutes. The bacteria in the microbiome can actually block that CXCR3 problem. And so if you have a healthy gut, you can eat gluten all day long and it's never gonna cause leaky gut because you don't have CXCR3 receptors expressed enough to cause a problem. But if you're missing the bacteria and you've gotten antibiotics, you're now going to be triggering that 6CR3 response and getting injury. You now have lonely cells that in just 16 minutes are turning into cancer cells. The predominant pathology feature under the microscope of a cancer cell is what we call the nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. The nucleus within each cell should be a very small percentage of the overall volume of the cell. So a healthy cell has a lot of cytoplasm and a tiny little nucleus. As it turns into cancer, it loses the cytoplasm, and you get a high ratio of nucleus to cytoplasm, and that's a precancerous cell right there. You also see a shift from these nice globule round cells to these skinny oblong cells that are starting to look like fibroblasts. When you lyse the communication network, you immediately get a lonely cell, and within 16 minutes, we just took normal intestine to precancerous and cancer-type phenotypes in 16 minutes. But what we found in 2012 was that this large family of molecules that are made by the bacteria and fungi looked a lot like the chemotherapy I used to make, and that was my aha moment. I was in clinic. White paper on soil science was brought in by William Vitalis, who's the unicorn. 
walks in and says, Zach, why don't you look at this white paper? I'm pouring through it quickly, flipping pages literally as quick as I can because I'm late for a patient. And suddenly that's on page 42 and I stop cold. Goosebump moment, most important moment of my life probably because I'm now here in purpose ever since that molecule hit my eyes. That molecule in, was in two dimensions, but what I saw was three dimensionally. This cluster right here looks a lot like the chemotherapy I made and I said, oh my gosh. Here I'm running a nutrition clinic trying to reverse chronic disease through food, and I never realized that maybe all the medicine and the secret is in the soil. And when I found that that stuff was made by the bacteria and fungi, it made all of the alarms go off and all of the dots connect. This is how the microbiome and its shift is causing cancer in the human, is the anti-cancer compounds are being made by the bacteria and the fungi. And what we found is these snowflakes, each species of bacteria, each species, remember five million species of fungi that we know of today, makes its own subset of these molecules. And these molecules act as an, a wireless communication network to inform not just the bacteria and the microbiome and the balance between the parasites and the fungi and the viruses and the bacteria that must be in balance because they're letting us live here. If that amount of microbiome was against us, we would not be here. We're allowed to be here, and it's communicating across all of them. It turns out that it's also communicating across us. This is the control again. You add glyphosate, you blow apart the membrane. But if you add back the communication network of the microbiome, the whole damn thing zippers together in about 20 minutes. If you take the, the control membrane and you add the communication network beforehand and then try to attack it with glyphosate, nothing happens. No injury. In fact, we've now taken glyphosate to 20,000 times the concentrations you would see in the, in the American diet, and we continue to see the microbiome intelligence continue to protect the system. Extraordinary journey. This is the, the article we published on that ability of the microbiome communication network to protect against the glyphosate injury. This is what it looks like functionally. So I showed you the microscopy. You take a control membrane and you add back the microbial life. Look at the protein synthesis that happens within minutes. You almost double the amount of protection across the gut membrane with something from bacteria and fungi. No human input here. No bacteria or fungi, by the way. It's sterile. It's just their communication network. And you get this massive stimulation of protein synthesis of the extracellular matrix tight junctions, gap junctions, you are making that cell more aware of what it is. If you add glyphosate, you destroy that awareness. But if you add the glyphosate and the microbiome back at the same time, no damage. This is what it looks like as an antidote to gluten. It's control membrane. Add gliadin from the gluten. You have total membrane collapse. You add back the terahydrate. Everything zips back up again. This is really cool. This is looking at the blood-brain barrier. If you add terahydrate to the blood-brain barrier, you get near doubling of the, the barrier system between the brain and your peripheral nerves and the bloodstream. You suddenly go into a big protective state between the brain and the outside world. Interestingly, if you add gluten right to the blood-brain barrier, there's no damage. This is gluten here, gliadin. But this is really cool biology that John figured out. But if you add gluten to the small intestine, you damage the small intestine. I already showed you that. This is not the small intestine, though. This is the brain barrier with the, the material that's made by the small intestine after exposure to gluten. So what you're seeing here is gluten itself doesn't do the damage. You have to show the gluten to the small intestines. It makes zonulin that goes systemic and destroys the tight junction system. Incredible biology that's being teased out here to show that the main symptom of gluten sensitivity, and you've seen this if you have gluten sensitivity, it's not bloating and stuff like that. That may happen. But the primary symptom is brain fog. That's the hardest one to get rid of. You can get your gut a little better with digestive enzymes and whatever you're going to do. But this is hard to fix. And to see the microbiome intelligent enough to repair that in seconds, this is the microbiome now taking this damaged blood-brain barrier from gluten sensitivity being exposed to the small intestine, takes it way back, way past where it was at control. And so the microbiome makes us bulletproof to the most insane chemical results that we've ever played out. 
We also have shown this, which is that glutathione, your main antioxidant, when exposed to the bacterial intelligence, goes up by 800% sustained. Your body continues to make glutathione. At baseline, you don't make much. You give it back the bacterial and fungal communication network, an 800% increase in your ability to make glutathione. If you take a supplement of glutathione, it may last in your bloodstream for four minutes. These measurements are taking 18 hours after exposure, still making 800% more. So in the future, as physicians, we are going to grow your medicine with you. Soil management can return the medical quality of their food. Mycelium and bacterial management, co composting, simple permaculture and biodynamic farming, regenerative soil management can all bring us back to health over the decades to come, and that's our mission now. I hope you've been changed not just by my microRNA, but by the words that you've heard today, and you can't help but do something different now. You've got to mobilize this information. You need to get this out to the world. You need to start to really look at how are we going to become healthy. We need to go back to vaginal birthing. If born by C-section, you need to quickly swab that child with mom's vaginal mucus all over its body, inside its ears, inside its nose, inside its mouth, rectum. Get that child covered with mom's vaginal mucus if born by C-section. You will add decades of healthy life to that child by that one simple intervention. Breathe nature. Get outside and breathe. Get your own food. Grow your own food. Know your farmer. Touch the earth and food that grows in it. Stand barefoot in the grass. Nakedness gets total extra credit. <laughs> Eat fermented foods daily. Get that back in. And ultimately, just hug, kiss, and generally celebrate every human, animal, and plant that you can touch. And you're going to have humanity return to you.